Hello everyone and welcome to our ScreenHub version 2 tutorial. Uh, the first step to manage your display using ScreenHub is creating an account. So you're going to want to be using a Google Chrome or Firefox web browser and navigate to v2.screenhub.com slash sign up. You're going to need to fill in uh, your name, email address, and choose a password for your account and then click on sign up. You'll then receive a verification email to activate your account. So go to your inbox, open up the email from ScreenHub, and click the verification link. Uh, you will now be able to log into a v2.screenhub.com account using the credentials that you just created. Once you're logged in, you're going to need to create a display. You can see here that I already have five displays created. To create a new display, you simply click on the plus button on the top left corner. And this opens up your display editor. You're going to want to choose a name for your display. Enter the height and width of your display in pixels. If you're unsure about this, uh, please contact the manufacturer of your display to get the exact dimensions. You're going to want to set whether your display is outdoor or an indoor display. And then you're going to want to also select if it's going to be a full color, single color, red or white. And then you're going to want to select the time zone for the location of your display. And finally, you're going to want to enter in the address for where your display is. going. Uh, the player ID section, we're going to leave blank for now. Uh, once the player has been downloaded onto your system, it will automatically generate a player ID for you that you can then copy and paste here when you're ready to go live with your content. After you've entered in all this information, you're gonna to want to scroll down in here and click on the save button and that will create your display. You should now see your new display on displays tab. If you'd like to set a profile picture, you can do so here. To change the display details or enter the player ID, click on the pencil icon. To delete the entire display, use the trash can. You can toggle the power off using the toggle power button, which will remotely switch off the content that's running on your display. You can add additional displays here if you'd like to manage even more screens from the same account. Please note that the groups feature is only used when you would like to run the same content on multiple displays with the same pixel dimension. For more information about groups, please view our groups video. Okay, so next we're going to create a playlist by clicking on Playlist. So to make a new playlist, you click on the plus button in the top left hand corner. It opens up this pop up menu and you need to select which display or group of displays you want this playlist associated with. Up here on the top blue ribbon, you can edit your playlist. So the first thing I'm going to do is give my playlist a new name. You can see there are some other features in the top blue bar. There is an undo button and a redo for any actions. Uh, you can toggle the grid that shows up within the slide editor itself. Now remember this is just for helping you with alignment of objects within the slide as you're making it and it will never show up on your display itself. You can edit the slide transition effects using the button next to that. And these are how the slide is going to transition from one slide into the next. You can adjust the slide duration using the clock. Now the default is always going to be set to three seconds and you're going to want to adjust that depending on how long or how short you would like your slide to play. Next to that is the background color paint can. So you can click on that and select any color you want. You have the options to go with the preset colors on the bottom. And you can also go with hex codes. After that, there is a slide preview button that I'll go over a little bit later. And then finally, there is the save icon so that once you're done making your slide, you can hit save. Along the left hand side here, there are buttons for adding different elements or objects to your slide. The camera button allows you to add videos into your slide. In order to add a video, you will need to upload one first. You can see here that I've already uploaded a number of them. Clicking on a video will automatically add it into your slide. Similarly, below the camera button, there is also an add an image button. 
You can see here this is a little bit different. You have an uploaded files library. And we also have access to stock photo galleries from Upsplash and also adding GIFs from Giphy. So I'm just going to add in a picture. When you add videos, photos, or GIFs to your slide, it will open up the media editor sidebar. Here you can adjust the opacity, change the depth within the slide itself, flip and rotate the image as you want to, adjust the aspect ratio. You can see on the position you have the options to fill, fit, or stretch your picture as you see fit. You can add animations, and that's how the object will appear within your slide. And you can also set the duration and how it enters onto it. And you can preview it by clicking the play button. The last objects in the object editor is a copy element button. So you can make multiple copies of a picture or video that you've added, and also a trash can. You can add text to your slide by clicking on the text icon. This will open up a text editor sidebar and insert a text box. Clicking in the text box will open up a font editor, as you can see here. And you can edit your text outline, outline color, the text color itself, the alignment within the the text box that you've created, as well as the font size, font characteristics, and which font you would like it to be. You can also see that it has an object properties editor over here on the left, just as the images did. And similarly, it has an opacity, depth, flip, animation, and the ability to copy and Clicking on the date time icon, will add the time into your slide. You can see that it has the same object properties editing as all the other formats. But what's unique is down here on the date time format, you can toggle it between displaying the time or displaying the date. And you can see here that you have a variety of different formats that you can choose from. Also clicking within the text box itself, will open up a font editor, just like the text editor, so you can modify the font and the appearance of your date or time however you want. Clicking on the counter icon adds a countdown to your display. You can adjust the target time by clicking in this field here, and you can also toggle which labels and which numbers will be displayed. You can add the current weather by clicking on the thermometer icon. You can change the icon set by clicking the select icon set button. You can see here are the options that we have. You're also able to resize the weather icon displaying in the current weather however you want. You can also adjust the font within the temperature and how the temperature's format is using the object properties. The forecast icon adds in the forecast for you. You have some options with adjusting how the temperature is formatted, as well as the icon sets, and you can also adjust which forecast is displayed, and you can toggle it between today's, a three-day, and a five-day forecast. Just like with the weather, you can also adjust the size at which it will display by adjusting it like that. The remaining icons on the sidebar here allow you to add a web page, a live video stream, a live RSS feed, stock feed, and also a connection to a Twitter account. I will be going over these other icons in greater depth in a future. Once you're happy with how your slide looks, you'll click the Save button. On the right hand side of the screen, just below that save button, there's this little arrow. And when you click on it, you'll see the list of all of the slides within your playlist. To delete a slide from your playlist, you'll click the X button. And then using the copy button, you're able to copy this slide both within the current playlist 
or copy it into another playlist you have. Below, there is the new slide plus icon, and adding that adds a new slide. And you're able to reorder your slides by simply clicking on them and dragging them to the position you want within your playlist. After you're done setting up your slides and have put them all in the order that you want them in, you can click the preview button and that will play a preview of your full slideshow in real time. Next, you'll need to schedule a playlist in the calendar tab so that the content will appear on your display. So I'm going to click over here onto schedule and that will open up my calendar. To start, Click anywhere within the calendar to trigger a new event box to pop up. Now that this has popped up, you'll need to select which playlist you'd like to schedule, along with the start and the end dates. You're also able to indicate if you want this to be an all-day event or a repeat event. After you have scheduled your playlist, you simply click Save and it will be added into your calendar. One last thing on the sidebar I'm going to go over for this video is the My Media. Clicking on this, you're able to see the full image library of not only the images that you've uploaded and the videos that you've uploaded, but also the stock photos that you've used. I'll be going over the reports and the downloads feature in future videos.